Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. Every week, we celebrate our supporters through shout-outs and personal birthday messages. We think this is also a fun way for us to hear all about the amazing places that you, our listeners, come from. I'd like to say hello to Omari, age 7. Mommy and Daddy love you so much. Happy belated birthday to Charlotte in Chesterland, Ohio, who turned 7 on April 6th. Mommy, Daddy, Graham, Ellie, and Otto love you very much. And happy belated birthday to Xavier Gratorix, who turned 9 on April 9th. Love Mom, Dad, Lydia, Kelly, and Ned. Happy 5th birthday to Robin from Hornby Island, British Columbia, on April 16th. Mom, Dad, Freddie, and baby Thea love you. You are an amazing, creative, and bright light in their lives. Happy birthday to Teddy from Red Lodge, Montana, turning 9 on April 16th. Mommy, Dada, Stevie, and Norm love you so much. Happy birthday to Natalie Dieter, who is turning 8 on April 16th. You are our sweet ray of sunshine, and we love you so much. Happy birthday to Addie in Seattle, who is turning 8 on April 17th. Happy birthday to Eden on April 17th. Love Mama and Daddy, wishing you the happiest 10th birthday. The world is a better place because you are in it. Happy 7th birthday to Chase from Savannah on April 17th. Mom, Dad, Rowan, Cookie, and Major love you so much. Happy birthday to Jack Slater from Dallas, Texas on April 18th. Love Mommy, Daddy, Elle, and Bo. Happy sixth birthday, Jackie boy. We love you more than all the blades of grass in the Greenway. Happy birthday to Sebastian from Mom, Dad, Patrick, Angus, and Claude. You are our cute and cheekiest little one. We love you so much and hope you have an outstanding birthday full of cookies. And happy birthday to Jojo, turning nine on April 19th. Mommy and Daddy love you to the moon and back. Happy birthday to you all. To reserve your special shout out, please visit sleeptightstories.org slash support. We can't wait to celebrate them with you. Now, on to our story. Libby and Margarita are back. Libby is enjoying school more, but still wishes they could do more math. She has made some friends and enjoys spending time with them, but Margarita is still the one she tells everything to. It's Friday, and that means pizza night. But when Mom gets Libby to come down for dinner, there is a piece of pizza missing. Where could it have gone? Margarita's Pizza Delivery Service Beep, buzz, beep. When Libby's alarm buzzes early in the morning, it feels like the worst sound in the world. She buries her face deeper into her pillow, wishing she could stay in her cozy bed forever. And the sun, just because it was warmer outside, didn't give the sun the right to make it so bright in her bedroom. Getting up means facing another long day at school, where everything seems loud and too bright. Sure, she had some friends now, which was a definite improvement but she wished they could just come over to her house, read books, and play with Margarita. Libby rolled out of bed and dressed, including her favorite rainbow-colored socks and baggy black hoodie. Libby liked to wear color, but most of the time she was content to just wear this same super comfy dark sweatshirt every day of the week. Except, if she wore it every day, it would start to get stinky. And stinky things annoyed Libby. 
Putting on her headphones, Libby walked to the kitchen, where she smelled her least favorite food in the whole wide world. Eggs. She grabbed a glass of milk and sat at the table to eat breakfast. Good morning, Libby, her mother said. Receiving no reply, she tried again. Libby. What? Oh, sorry, Mom. I didn't hear you with my headphones on, Libby finally replied. You know, it would be nice if once you didn't wear your headphones at breakfast time, her mother said. Music helps me get moving in the morning, and the last time I played my music without headphones, you said it sounded like a bunch of pots and pans being thrown down the stairs, or something like that. What's for breakfast? I'm starving. I'm making fried eggs and toast this morning, her mother replied. Please, no runny yolks. Runny yolks are disgusting. Why can't we have pizza for breakfast like margarita? Margarita is an unusual cat with an unusual digestive system, her mother said, as she put a plate of eggs and toast in front of Libby. That reminds me, I need to feed that crazy cat. Margarita, here kitty kitty, it's breakfast time. Margarita jumped off her napping place in the living room with a thump. She trotted into the kitchen, where Libby's mother was heating up the food she knew the silly cat would eat. But she would try to convince Margarita to eat something else at every meal. First, she tried to give Margarita a drink of milk, but she wouldn't drink it. Then, she brought her a bowl of stinky tuna, but Margarita would not eat it. Then Libby's mother tried giving her chicken gravy cat food, but Margarita would not eat it. Libby's mother sighed and said, you are one spoiled and unusual cat. Just then, the microwave dinged and Libby's mother put the plate with a slice of pizza on the floor for Margarita to eat. The cat started purring as she ate it all up. Then, Margarita disappeared as quickly as she came. She has been eating super fast lately, Libby said. She puts me to shame, and I eat fast. After inhaling her breakfast, Libby brushed her teeth, grabbed her book bag, and after saying goodbye to her mother, walked to school. She tried to say goodbye to Margarita, but she was nowhere to be found. School was as loud, bright, and boring as usual. Libby liked learning and generally liked going to school. She just wished she could spend more time studying what she wanted. Luckily, she had her new friends to talk to, and they felt much the same way. After school, Libby walked home as quickly as she could. It was Friday, which meant tonight was pizza night. And pizza was Libby's favorite food. Lately, they have been making their own instead of ordering from the nearby restaurant. She was also excited to spend time with Margarita. Though she had more friends now, Margarita was still the one she confided in the most. She was also the only friend who would let her put on bows and scarves that matched her orange fur. For some reason, Her friends wouldn't let her do that, especially the boys. As long as there was pizza for her to eat, Margarita was up for anything. Libby walked in the door and called out, Margarita, I'm home. Here, kitty kitty. As usual, Margarita ran to greet her at the door. Hi, Margarita. Did you miss me today? I missed you. Today, I was so bored, Libby began, 
drawing out the words as she stroked the cat's orange fur. So bored that during math, I started imagining. What if you could go to school instead of me? Could you imagine? You, sitting in class, trying to solve math problems with those cute little paws. She laughed and continued. But then, I thought of something even funnier. What if I taught you how to sing? I also thought you might make a great Italian chef. You could make the perfect pizza, right? Especially margarita pizza, which is your favorite. Margarita blinked slowly, her tail twitching in amusement, or maybe just in response to the gentle pets. I wish we could spend more time learning math in school. It's more predictable. I like to read books, but English class lacks any kind of logic. Walking into the kitchen, Libby said to Margarita, Would you like a snack? I am getting something to drink and a snack to eat. I could share. Margarita purred and rubbed up against Libby's leg. How about some milk? Would you like that? Libby asked. Margarita replied with a meh. How about some stinky tuna fish? Margarita replied with a meh. I bet you would like some kitty snacks. Margarita replied with a meh. Okay. How about some pizza bites? I could heat some up for you. Libby said, as she reached into the freezer to bring out the delicious bites. Margarita replied with a meow and rubbed up against Libby's leg. Don't eat too much before dinner, you two, Libby's mother said as she came into the kitchen. Tonight is homemade pizza night and you don't want to ruin your appetite. I have an unlimited appetite for pizza, Mom, and I think Margarita does too. While Libby finished her math homework, her mom baked the pizza and mixed the salad for dinner. Libby, I have sliced the pizza. Come have dinner. There was no answer, so Libby's mother walked to her bedroom where she saw Libby staring off into space with her headphones on, listening to music. Tapping her on the shoulder, she said, Libby, come eat some dinner, and please don't wear your headphones. I want to hear all about your day. When they both walked into the kitchen to eat dinner, Libby's mother noticed a slice of pizza was missing. She put her hands on her hips and raised an eyebrow, surveying the scene. Well, I wonder what happened to that slice, she asked. I could have sworn I made a whole pizza, eight slices, not seven. Libby laughed, but glanced at the pizza and then around the kitchen, as if the missing slice might magically reappear. Maybe it grew legs and walked away? she suggested, trying not to laugh too hard. If that's the case, I hope it walks back into my tummy. I'm starving. But then her gaze landed on Margarita, who had just innocently walked into the kitchen and stopped to clean her whiskers in the corner. Or maybe we have a pizza thief. Libby turned to Margarita. Margarita, have you started a pizza delivery service we don't know about? She asked, walking over to crouch beside her best friend. You aren't delivering pizza to your friends, are you? Margarita simply purred in response, her tail flicking back and forth, the picture of innocence. All right. I know she is a super fast eater, but there is no way she can eat a slice that big so quickly. It's time we figured out what is going on, her mother said, 
grabbing a bite of pizza before they started searching the house. Together, Libby and her mother walked around the house looking for signs of pizza. They checked under the couch, behind the curtains, and even in the most unlikely places, like the bookshelf and the plant pots. They went down to the basement where Margarita had gotten lost before. They even checked outside. Maybe Margarita isn't the one who took the slice. It could be a mouse, Libby said to her mother. If a mouse took that slice of pizza, then we have a bigger problem than a cat who loves pizza, Libby's mother replied. Or many little problems, Libby said with a shiver. Mice scared her. Finally, they found a trail of tiny cheese pieces leading to Libby's room. I think we need to vacuum more often. I can't believe I am seeing crumbs on my floor, Libby's mother said. They tiptoed inside Libby's room, only to discover a stash of pizza slices hidden under Libby's bed, each slice carefully wrapped in napkins. Margarita sat beside the stash, looking up at them with big, round eyes, as if proud of her collection. Margarita! So you are now also a pizza delivery cat? Libby exclaimed, trying to sound serious, but failing miserably. So she started to laugh. I suppose we should be grateful she's saving some for later. But let's make a deal, Margarita. You still get to eat pizza for breakfast and dinner, but no more hiding slices, okay? Margarita meowed softly, as if agreeing to the terms, and rubbed against their legs, sealing the deal with her purrs. Well, I guess we solved the case of the missing pizza slice, Libby said, picking up Margarita for a cuddle. But some of those slices are starting to look disgusting. Yuck! And they were under my bed. They returned to the kitchen with the collection of delivered pizza slices and sat down to eat dinner. Delicious pizza and salad, Mom. I'm super hungry, Libby said as she started eating a slice. Thank you, Libby. I'm pretty hungry myself. Libby's mother said. After taking another big bite, she continued. Guess what you need to do tomorrow? On a Saturday, Mom? Libby sighed. She knew exactly what her mother was telling her. She would be spending part of her Saturday cleaning her room. You have to help me, Margarita. It's only fair. Margarita let out a meow as she patiently waited for her slice of pizza. And that is the end of our story. Good night. Sleep tight. Sleep tight.